Well, hi, I'm Larry Cook with In the Word Ministries, and I'm so glad you joined us today. As you can see, my co-host is out today. It's going to be a, a day of teaching today. We're going to share the Word with you. I am so excited about the Word of God. I've been studying the Word now for 47 years, and in 47 years, I've never gotten tired of hearing God's voice through His Word he has so much to say, so many plans for us, so many creative ideas that he wants us to know and understand. And so I want to share with you today uh, some verses, some scripture, and, and break it down to, to make sense of some of the things that we've struggled with in life, of understanding. Matter of fact, there's so much of the Word of God that, or, well, most of it actually, when you study the Word of God, if you're trying to do it out of your intellect, you're going to miss what God's trying to say and do. God has a way to speak to your heart through the Holy Spirit because the Word of God was written by the Holy Spirit, and so it can only really be interpreted back by the Holy Spirit. So today we're going to see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying uh, about a scripture in Hebrews chapter 11. And these scriptures are fairly familiar with most people if you've been to church very much. And I heard about, we're going to talk about the word faith, and I heard about faith all my life and, and how to have faith and what faith means and all, but it was kind of elusive to me, how, to, how do you get faith, how does faith look, uh, boy, you need faith, you know, everything works by faith, and I'm like, well, that's good, but, but where do you get this faith from, what does faith look like, how do you, how do you explain what faith is and how to... Uh, and and grab hold of it. If I need faith, I want it. You know, if you got to have faith, give me some. But uh, how do you get it? Where does it come from? How do we uh, understand it? So years of uh, praying about it and studying, and and uh, one day it really came up to me from somebody asking a question about faith that I started digging in a little deeper and asking the Holy Spirit. Please explain to me how faith works. Give me an understanding so I can figure out how to explain it to others. And uh, I, I like simplicity, and I like pictures. And so uh, I like to draw mental pictures, and I like to have visuals, because we are visual people. And so I was praying one day, and, and when I was reading of course, it's called the faith chapter, chapter 11 of Hebrews, called the faith chapter. When I was reading it one day, verse 6 just exploded <laughs> in, in front of me, like, look at this. And so I was looking at it, and here, here's what uh, verse 6 says in Hebrews 11. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Talking about God, impossible to please God without faith. Well, that really grabbed me because I don't know uh, who you want to please, but I tell you, you better want to please God. If, if you don't please anybody else, you need to please God because when God is pleased with you, blessings are poured out. Blessings will flow. And so we need to please God. And I'm thinking without faith, you can't please God. Well, man, we've got to have faith. This uh, we we got to figure out how to get faith. We better we better grab hold of this somehow. And so, without faith, it's impossible to please Him, God. For whoever will come to God must believe that He is, and that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek after Him. And in this this verse. I found that there's three different points that are made in here that show us what faith is and how faith works. Three points we're going to get out of this verse that explain faith. First, it says it's impossible to please God without faith. And then he goes and describes exactly what it is and takes to have faith and what happens with faith. And so let's look at it in, 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 as the Holy Spirit gave me direction. And so I'm just going to pray for you before I get into it, that you'll uh, have ears to hear and eyes to see that, that God will open your heart today. 
Because I want you to know the power of God. I want you to know the truth of God. I want you to walk in the fullness of the things of God. So, Father, I just pray for our audience today that as I speak this word, that the Holy Spirit would get into their hearts and mind and show them and direct them into a great understanding and a greater understanding of the word of God and what you have for them today and how to move into the power of God through faith. So, Father, I thank you for this audience, and I thank you for what you're going to do and what you're going to speak to them today in Jesus' name. I sure love you. I'm so excited about this uh, because I know when you grab hold of it and when you see it, it's going to absolutely bless you and take you somewhere that you've never been before in, in the spirit realm. So it says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. The very first part of this is saying, the, the, the point is, is, does God exist? You got to believe that he is, that he is God, that he is who he said he is. And, and I know that sounds kind of simple on the surface, but, but I know people, uh, church people, that was, oh, I believe in God. Oh, I believe in Well, you can say you believe in God, but if you really know who he is, if you really believe he really exists, then that means you believe he, he, he is who he says he is in the Bible. He does what he says he'll do. He will, he will do uh, 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 according to his word. He will keep it. And if we really believe that and he tells us to do something, then we'll do it. Why? Because we believe he is. Because we believe he really said it. Because we believe that he's the one that spoke it. And if God speaks, if God's the one that's sharing with us, he really exists, then he did what he said, then we better believe that he really is, that he actually exists and actually has spoken and actually wrote this word that God is almighty and all-powerful. And since he is then I will react to him in the proper manner. In other words, you can say you believe in something. You know, I, I can say I believe that my car is going to crank today and I'm going to drive into town, but I can go out there and sit and never put the key in it because I'm not sure it's going to work, even though I said I believe it. Well, it wouldn't make sense. If I really believe it, then I'm going to crank that car and head for Houston. I believe it's going to happen. Instead of sitting there, gosh, I wonder, I hope, man, I wish it would work. And that's the way people treat God. So many times people say they believe, but you listen to them talk, and they don't really believe. They don't really trust. They don't really react. They don't really have faith They don't. They don't because they don't believe. And so the first... The, the number one point here is, is you've got to know that God exists, that God is really who God says he is. That's the beginning of faith. That's where your faith starts from. That's where we kick our faith into gear is in believing God is real. God is alive. God is not dead. God is still active in our lives. He's still active in the world. He's still activated and doing great and mighty things. And if you don't believe that, then you really don't believe that God is. Because we got a God that's on the move, that God is always creative and God is always activating and God is always designing and, and preparing and blessing and moving in so many different ways. And, and you got to get that because, like I said, I know a lot of church people they go to church on Sunday, they sit in a pew, and they, oh, I believe in God. But they live a life that says, I don't believe in God. They live a life that's full of anguish and, and, and uh, fear and worry and torment, uh, always questioning what's going to happen. Well, if you read the Bible and you believe God, he said he's going to provide. If you believe in God, he said, perfect love cast out fear. God, God said that his, through his word that we're healed by his stripes. We, we have so many promises from a real God that exists that there should be no fear in our life. There should be no worry, no torment from the enemy because we have a God that's bigger 
than any problem you could ever have. See, so you got to start believing God really is. And so when I'm talking to you today and I read this scripture, I want this to get down inside of you. I want you to get so serious about this. God is. It's not a maybe God is or a hope God is or a wish God is. God is. And God is exactly who he said he is. That's the joy of this, knowing that i got a God out here that, is, that just surrounds and is in and a part of everything. By the way, I, I can't explain it. Uh, there's no way you can explain God. God is, his mind is so much bigger, so much greater, so much uh, uh, more than we can even imagine that to try to explain God or figure God out with our little wisdom and compared to the wisdom of God is, uh, what did somebody say? It's like taking a thimble of water, just a little bit of water compared to the ocean. We don't have much compared to what God is and what God knows. And, but we need to come knowing that he is, and he is this vast, incredible God. So that's number one. God is. You, you just get that down in your spirit that he really is. He exists. He is who he said he is. Then the second part, remember there's three parts to this. Uh, it says not only does God exist, but that he is a rewarder. This is, this is incredible when I, when I saw this to understand uh, what kind of God he is. I understand he's God. I understand he is the creator of everything, that anything that we see or know, God created. Every molecule, every cell, every bit of everything you can see, God did it. God designed it. God is genius. He knew exactly what he was doing and did it perfect. God is, and he's a kind of a God that rewards. That means a reward is something given to somebody because they saw something in you they wanted to bless. They wanted to do good to you because of your because of something you've done or something you did. So what, what would God want to reward us for? Believing in him, trusting him, recognizing who he is. And he's a rewarder. He's not, and, and see, this, here's a hard problem that, that uh, a lot of churches had for years, and some of them are changing today, but there's still so many churches that preach this mean God, this angry God, now, God is a just judge. God's going to judge, and he's going to judge right. He's going to judge sin for what it is. But he also has mercy. He also has grace, and, and he wants to bless you. But his, his nature and his desire of the kind of God he is, this is his nature, this is what he wants to do, is to bless you, to do good to you, he wants to reward you with goodness and kindness and with all that you'll ever need. He wants to do good. You know, a good father, uh, I tried to be a good father to my children. I wanted to bless them. And when I saw that they understood that I was the father, <laughs> I'm the daddy around here, and I'm in charge, and I'm provider, that they, they believe that I am who I said I was, I'm the daddy here. I'm in charge. Then when they respected that, I would say, hey, son, you need to go take the garbage out. And they'd take the garbage out. You know, I saw they really believed me. They really trusted me. They really wanted to obey me. And they knew who I was. And for that, I wanted to reward them. I wanted to bless them for honoring me and, uh, and being obedient to my words and what I said and what I did uh, for them and how I spoke into their life. In the same way, God sees, God's watching, God knows what our heart is, and he sees how we're acting. He wants to bless us because we love him. He wants to bless us because we're obedient to his word. He wants to do good. That's his nature, to do good. Now, i, I got to make sure you understand it. That doesn't mean if you're going to live like hell that you still can go to hell. God's not going to stop you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. 
the Bible says very clearly that God wished that everybody would be saved. God wished that everybody would turn to him. It's God, God wants us to follow him. God wants us to believe in him. God wants to, to bless every. There's not anybody in this world today that God doesn't want to set free and bless. And I don't care how bad they are. I don't care what they've done. And I know you, some of us judge people by, by their sin and can't see beyond their sin, but God does. I minister in jails and prisons, and I deal with some, some very hard, hardcore men and women that have done some evil and wicked things. Now, God's going to judge them for what they're doing unless, <laughs> here's the good there, here's the reward. If they will turn to Jesus and repent of their sins, this goes for you too. If you will turn from your sin, turn to Jesus, ask forgiveness for your sins, he will reward you in acknowledging who he is. He will reward you with salvation. In other words, the forgiveness of your sin, the washing away of your past. It comes when we acknowledge him as God, that he is the only one that can save us from our sins. He's the only one that can set us free from our past. And so when I deal with men and women that have done some incredibly evil things, I know that they're ready for judgment. And the judgment's not going to be good. But I also know that we have a God that wants to bless, a God that wants to do good, a God that wants to save and set free. And so I minister that hope. I minister that life because I know what kind of God I got. And I know it's his desire and his nature to want to do good to people. And if they will receive and accept forgiveness, they will be blessed. They will be transformed. So I don't care when I look out at the world what anybody's done. I mean, I don't, I, I hate evil. Don't misunderstand. I hate evil. I hate wickedness. I hate sinfulness. I hate people that hurt and do all these things. I hate that stuff. But I have to love the man. I have to love the woman because I know there's a way for them to be transformed. It's a way for you today to be set free from that past, from that evil, from that stuff that you've done that you feel guilty and shameful for. Because I got a God that's what? He's a rewarder. If you will acknowledge him, he wants to reward you. He wants to bless you. And I'm a living example of watching the presence and power of God take over my life and change me, set me free from all the wickedness, all the hate, all the ugliness in my life, and give me hope, and give me a future. And it happened because I believed what kind of God he is, that he's a God that is and he rewards. There is a third part, though. The third part of this is God is a rewarder of who? Now, here's the, here, herein lies the biggest problem we have in Christianity to me in church, or one of the biggest problems, is what our response is. He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Diligently seeking him. That means, man, God's got to be first place. And, and my, my desire for him and to serve him and to know him and to understand him going to take diligence. I mean, I got to set myself to study. I got to set myself to pray. I got to, I got to spend time and energy and effort to get to know how to follow and how to serve and what the plan is. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a marriage in a way. Uh, I wanted my wife before she was my wife. I met this beautiful blonde lady, and I said, man, this little blue-eyed thing, I want her to be my wife. Man, she is exactly what I'm looking for. Well, she didn't look at me and go, yeah, let's get married. She looked at me and said, I'm really not ready for, for that kind of relationship or any in-depth anything. And I thought, man, but I want her to be my wife. I want to know her in a deeper way. I want our relationship to grow and be committed. 
Well, I had to diligently seek after her. That didn't just happen because I wanted her. It happened because I went out and bought flowers. I took her out. I spent time with her. I spent time talking to her. I spent energy. I spent money. I wanted to know this woman and to have a relationship with her. I had to diligently seek after her. I mean, I had to, 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 to give. As a matter of fact, I almost gave up everything else because I wanted that relationship so bad that I put other things aside that used to be important, became less important because I saw what I needed and wanted in her because I needed her in my life to complete me. The Bible says the wife completes the husband. I needed that completion in my life, so I diligently sought her to become my wife. And through that diligence and that seeking, she turned her heart to me and what an incredible journey we've been on since we got married. God has blessed us so richly, but it didn't just happen. It happened through diligence. And the same thing is going to happen with your relationship to God. When you get serious about your relationship, God, serious enough that the things that used to be important aren't important anymore. What's important is, is getting to know the real and living blessed Savior the one that has the power to forgive and to bless you eternally. I mean, not just in this life. We're talking about forever. We're talking about a God that has a plan for your ever, for everlasting life. That death isn't the end of anything. Death's just putting the body aside, but your spirit, your soul is going to go be with God forever, or it's going to hell, one or the other. There's, I mean, but it's going to be your choice. And I choose to seek God. I choose to be diligent in my path of, of searching after the heart of God and to know the will of God, which means you're going to have to do some reading. So sad I don't see people reading the Bible much anymore. We, we need to read the Word of God because this is His love letter to us. God has written us a love letter. And we need to find out how much He loves us, why He loves us, what His plan for is for His lover, and how to... Become that person that gets the blessing. See, my wife, um, when, when we met, she was working and uh, trying, to, trying to make a living. And we got married, and we decided after a little while that, you know, she needs to be home with the kids. I, I, I don't mind going out and working and blessing her and taking care of her because she's such a blessing to me. She believes in me. She trusts me. She encourages me. She builds me up. And so I just want to bless her and to do good for her. And, and I've blessed my wife because she blesses me. It's the same thing with God. God wants to bless us. And when we diligently seek to do his will, to do his purpose, we're blessing him. He blesses us. Uh, it, it's not that hard. Christianity is not that hard. It's not that difficult. Having faith is really fairly simple. We got to know God is. We got to know what kind of God he is. He's a God that desires to bless us, to reward us, to do good to us. And how do we get into that and know that God and that way to get blessed is that we have to really understand the diligently seeking after his presence, to go after it, to want it, to realize that what we need comes from God. What I need in life doesn't come from this world. What I need in this life, I, I don't get blessed by this world. The things of this world don't satisfy. Matter of fact, the things of this world are so temporary. You know, you eat a good steak right now. I mean, you could have the best steak that ever existed. You could go to Kansas and get the biggest, sweetest, best steak ever, and in four hours you'll be hungry again can't satisfy you you can have anything that this world offers and won't be long you'll be wanting more it'll never be enough it'll never satisfy but the things of God will satisfy your soul the things of God uh, are permanent when God comes in he blesses you with such peace such joy such hope and so that's why he said without faith it's impossible to please God if you don't understand who he is, how are you going to please him? If you don't understand what his nature is, how are you going to trust him? 
if you don't understand that, that the kind of God he is, you won't diligently seek him. So you won't walk in faith. So you need these three attributes in your life to have faith. You've got to believe that God is, that he's a rewarder, and then seek after him with all your heart. The Bible says with all your heart, with all your mind, with, all, with everything that's in you, go after God. It's worth it. It's worth being blessed by him to go after him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all that's in you. I pray today that uh, faith comes alive in you so that you can see God, see his blessing, see his encouragement, be healed mentally, physically, and spiritually. God cares about the whole man. He's concerned about all of you, everything about you. He knows your hurts, your heartaches, your problems, your issues. He knows about your needs financially, friends, love. He knows all these things. And I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that your faith is going to grow and he's getting ready to bless you. He's going to reward you beyond anything that you can think or imagine because he's the God of the universe. He knows everything. He has everything. And he has a way to bless you today. So pray and ask God forgiveness. Ask him to come into your heart to be your Lord, to be your Savior. I mean, he's a mighty God. He's a holy God. He's a powerful God, and he loves you. He is madly in love with you. All he's waiting on is for you to come to him and to show him that you are in love with him. We appreciate you. I, I pray that you're listening and, and watching our show. We did have a wrong address. I think we got it right now. So if you've written and didn't get a return or anything about it, we made a mistake in our address. Write us again. Get in touch with us. Watch us. Like us. Share others uh, with others. We want to see you again. God bless you. Appreciate you.